you know, no matter where you're at in the country right now, either A, you're lucky enough that you've got some rain and, you know, the muddy water has drove your shad, your bait fish to the backs of the creeks already searching for that clear water. Or B, you're like most of us that haven't had a lot of rain and you've just got bait everywhere and the fish do not want to bite. So in today's video, we're going to be going over how to tackle when you're out on the water and all you see is bait everywhere and any kind of fish that you find just really don't want to bite. What's going on guys? I'm Steven Turner. Welcome back to Turner Fishing. I appreciate each and every one of y'all tuning in to the best crappy fishing teaching YouTube on the YouTube planet. Let's be real. Come on guys. Oh, so <clears throat> I've been fishing a couple times since the last video. You know, we went out there, we caught, you know, a couple on some minnows, whatever, a couple on some jigs and went out there with my buddy and literally w as soon as we've dropped the boat in the water we uh you know had to side scan on his boat we were going down just a stretch uh getting out to the no wake zone to head out to our spot that we were going to start at and literally on the side scan was just a wall of shad for at least a quarter of a mile which is insane i mean it's not unheard of it's just insane you know, a lot of YouTube gurus or whatever you watch on YouTube is going to be like, it's the fall, go to the backs of the creeks, that's where the crappy is. But I'm going to tell you right now, if you have a winter drawdown, that's just not the case. <clears throat> if your lake drops 5 to 10 feet every winter to kill grass, unlike it does here, but that's why they do it. Or, you know, your lake's dropping for dam repairs, which ours, ours does every five years or whatever. But what this does is once that lake starts dropping, you're going to have what I call uh, a dumb bait fish moment. And what that's going to do, all your bait fish is going to go to the middle. Uh, middle of your river channel, middle, middle of your creeks channel, at the mouth of your creeks, yada, yada, yada. And... They're just back there until they decide, hey, I'm ready to go to the back. And, and during a winter drawdown, this happens every single year. And it lasts for a month at least that there is just bait everywhere. Everywhere you look, there's bait. And until we get a really cold night that drives them to that warmer water that's coming out, out of these feeder creeks, they're going to be there. So luckily next week, we're gonna have some 30 degree nights. I'm hoping that's gonna change things. But until then, I just wanna kinda hop on here, explain how I go about getting a little bit more bites because you find the fish. The fish are not hard to find this time of year. You know, you think fall, you wanna look a little bit shallower, but to be honest, from what I was seeing the other day down here in South Carolina, 18, to 12 feet was the hot zone now these were not bigger fish these were you know your last year's spawns your uh two years ago spawns your eight to ten inches but they don't want to bite so how do you get those fish to bite versus the bigger fish that i'm going to explain here in a minute so if you get on a brush pile a dock bridge pylon uh, that random bush over there in one of your favorite creeks that's stacked with fish. I mean, the other day we were fishing a spot, and I kid you not, it had at least 4,000 fish on it. And the majority of those were crappy. They're, they were not big. They were 9 to 10 inches, which is good eating size. I mean, you can't go wrong with a 9 to 10 inch fish making a daggum sandwich. <clears throat> but what ended up happening was... If you looked around with your forward facing sonar, there was just shad here, shad here, shad here. I mean, yeah, I don't have forward facing on my boat anymore, but you know, I go out with my buddy, he's got it. But we, uh, what I ended up doing was putting on a smaller jig. And a crappy, you know, is a predator. If something, looks like an easy meal he's more likely to bite it now 
once we get later on and those water temperatures start dropping, I do suggest using a bigger bait because they're more opportunist feeders than they are, you know, just a, a straight up predator. So <clears throat> once the water temperatures drop and you don't see a lot of bait fish around, you can get away with using your two to two and a half inch jigs to catch those bigger fish that are more than likely going to take an easy meal to feed up for the winter. But right now, when there's so much bait everywhere, they literally have a Ryan's all-you-can-eat buffet right on every brush pile that they go to. I honestly, I use the 1.5-inch stinker that we carry here at Crappy Man Jigs in Crappy Man Green because you have got to stand out. I'll tell you now, pink chartreuse, the brightest chartreuse in the world that you know happened. To, I happen to make orange white anything that's different you do not want to be a minnow color as you hit the water you know take your jig heads for instance you know i normally use just a regular lead jig head i've been dibby dabbling in into painting jig heads and using them uh we got something coming out here i want to say november that i've been slowly 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 working on as i'm doing orders but y'all see that soon but you want the brightest the most obnoxious combo like if you're using a crappy man jig uh crappy man green little minnow little stinker the crappy man swim bait all those 1.5 inch <clears throat> and you throw it on a pink head a black head uh, just a yellow head a chartreuse head there's something that's not natural and when that jig falls through those just millions of shad that's around they'll be able to target your bait out of all the shad and eat it and when you're on a brush pile and there's no bait around you're using those little bitty baits the ones that are still hungry are going to be like hey that's a free meal right there and they're going to come up and thump it now as I was saying, you're catching your last year's spawn, this year's spawn. You know, you know, you will catch some five, six inches that spawned last spring. How do you catch the bigger fish? And quite honestly, guys, I'm giving to you real. There ain't no bull crap on this channel if you do not have forward-facing sonar. Or, or, hold on, don't don't click off the video. A trolling setup. If you are good at long lining or tight lining, which I am not, I am a single pole, one hit wonder, then your long lining or your tight lining is the way to go. You're able to cover more water. Those bigger fish are going to be in wolf packs. Wolf packs of four or five, 11 to 17 inch fish. Yeah, 17 inch fish. I'm, I'm serious. And they're wolf packing down these river channels and they're wolf packing down these creek channels. And the only way to target them is to either A, cover a lot of water by trolling at different depths, figuring out what depth you're going to get bit at. I would suggest, you know, a 10 footer, an 8 footer, a 6 footer to start off with, figure out which one you're going to get a bite, maybe one 15 foot, depending on how deep your lake is. And then a single, single pole live scoper will be able to figure out the biggest fish in the lake <clears throat> let's be honest because you're going to go out there you're going to find these schools now when you when you look for bait fish i wanted to make a whole video about this i still might if you find a just massive wad of shad you're in the wrong area you want to find little pods that means something's eating them now the majority of the fish that you see eating them is going to be largemouth bass they're going to be up under them coming up there picking them off but those bigger crappy are going to wolf pack and they're going to sit right up under these fish and sit there and run through the school go off ingest whatever they eat then they're going to keep coming through and they're bulking up for the creek run the winter time all that good stuff and the way to target these fish is using you know like the snipe beaver or the little minnow but still you want to be different these fish are so keyed in on whatever size the bait fish is in your lake. You really kind of want to match that size, but have a bright 
jig, pink, chartreuse, white, etc. And that's how you catch the biggest fish in your lake right now. So I just kind of want to hop on here, make this video. I know a lot of you guys are out there struggling this time of year. I'm struggling this time of year just because of the lack of forward facing sonar. I'm having to readjust and fish for smaller fish, which I do not like. But it really lets reality set that I can still catch them. And that's one thing that is going to be proved without having it, which I, I don't plan on not having it for long. As soon as I get these bills caught up, as soon as I expand Crappy Man Jigs, we're going straight back, getting our 13 foot pole, and we're going to be sticking some giants. But anyway, guys, if you like today's videos, please hit that thumbs up button for me. Subscribe down below if you haven't. We just hit 11,000 subscribers. I want to hit 20,000 within the next year. So, happy Halloween, guys. My anniversary is on Halloween. So, that's going to be fun.